So here's the ADE32 Octo controller from Abstract Data, a massive hub load of control options for clocks, gates, pulses, sample and hold gates for rhythm generation which you can loop, rhythmic loops, sample and hold CV, LFOs, arpeggios and digital noise. So we'll get into how the unit works and go further with some examples there in the video, but here we start with a master tempo which goes from 20 BPM to the left all the way to its fastest setting of 270 BPM to the right. You can see the start of the bar with the leftmost LED and the quarter note beat next to that. There's an output select which moves a blue LED down the right side of the module to show which output's selected. There's then the output type which is pulses, gates, LFO ramp, LFO square, LFO triangle, LFO sign, noise, sample and hold CV, sample and hold gates, arpeggios and then finally rhythmic loops. Once you've selected what you want, the next knob lets you set the clock division or multiplication of that tempo. Whether you want something as a 16th note or slower, you can select that really easily. We then move on to the phase offset for the output. So let's get into these features with some musical examples. Let's start building up a patch and we'll start with a basic sequence. So if you think about what a sequence in a DAW or other piece of gear has, if you were writing MIDI notes for example, we'd need to give a pitch and also a gate, which is the note on and off and that also controls the note's length. So we'll start by patching in my output to come from my oscillator. This is a simple saw wave output. I'll then take the output select on the octo controller to select channel 1. The output type is going to be an arpeggio set the clock division to a quarter of a single beat which is a 16th note. I'll then take this into the pitch input on my oscillator which is a 1 volt per octave input. So there's the arpeggio, by pressing the option button we can select from 10 different arpeggio patterns. stick with this pattern and the second thing we're going to need is a gate. So let's go to output 2 and use the gate output. We've got two gate outputs with various options so we'll go through these. We'll also for now need to set this to the same 16th note multiplication of that tempo to match the arpeggio. I'll take my second output which is a gate into an envelope generator which you can see is flashing away in time with the arpeggio. I'm then going to take my output to my sound card from the VCA and patch the input to the VCA to be the oscillator signal that we've just been listening to. So here's turning up the VCA's level. But I don't want that to just offset and be a constant level on the VCA, so I'm going to turn that down and take the envelope's output to control the VCA's level. If I turn the envelope settings to just be a full sustain on the ADSR, pressing the option control on the octo controller we can flick through different gate lengths for longer or shorter notes. We've got two longer settings on the gates 3 and 4 output as well. Sticking with this one I'll then shape the envelope generator to taste. That's our sequence playing, we've got the pitch information from the arpeggio and a steady rhythm triggering an envelope to open up our VCA. In a standard subtractive synth voice we'd have a filter in between the oscillator and the VCA. So before the sound enters the VCA let's take that into the dual bog filter which is next to the oscillator and then patch the filter's output back into the VCA. So we've now got low pass filter control. I've got my envelope for the VCA and I could easily copy that down by splitting the signal with a stack cable and take that into the CV input of the filter so it opens the filter with the same envelope as the VCA.
and we can play with that resonance. But rather than doing that, let's take some modulation from the octo controller. So let's take a third output from the octo controller and change its output type to be a triangle LFO. And you can see that third output's LED showing the LFO signal, so let's take that to the control input on the filter. So we've got the same options before and we can change the rate of that LFO. With both longer or shorter LFOs that are all tempo synced. Or we can turn off that quantization for a completely free running LFO. And this gives really smooth rate changes, it's just like a typical analog LFO with nothing clocked to any sort of tempo. So you can hear that's a much smoother change, but hitting option on the quantize button will lock that back to the tempo. So taking this a little bit further, let's use another LFO for vibrato. We'll patch up a typical vibrato by patching in an LFO into the frequency modulation input of our oscillator. For now, let's turn the modulation down on the filter so it's really clear to hear what's going on and just hear that oscillator's tone. I'm going to take output 4 and use a sine wave LFO, and again you can see the LED on the output is showing the signal level. We'll then patch this into the frequency modulation of the oscillator. So that might be great for some electro style effect sounds but this isn't particularly musical so let's take this up to a faster rate. Let's unquantize the timing so we've got a free running LFO. Something you get on older mono synths, like something like a Roland SHO9 and in some software synths as well, is a delayed and fading in vibrato effect. This is the equivalent of a guitarist holding and sustaining the note and then increasing the amount that they wobble that string for a deeper string bending giving that fading vibrato effect. To mimic this I'm going to take my LFO into the second input of a VCA and I'm going to take the VCA's output into the FM input on the oscillator. And then we've got the level of the VCA here. And that's setting the vibrato level. But what I'm going to do is take a ramp wave LFO to control that VCA so that the level rises with an LFO. Let's take output 5, set that to an LFO ramp, and then divide that musically to be half a bar in length. Then we can take that into the CV input of the VCA to open that VCA, letting the LFO through. So you can hear that the FM depth increases with a ramp LFO. Let's turn up the FM amount on the oscillator. I'm then going to go back to output 4 and change that vibrato LFO's rate. And going back to output 5, let's make that ramp LFO, letting the vibrato through the VCA cycle right across a full bar. So this is creating vibrato across several notes, which isn't a common musical feature, so let's slow that arpeggio pattern down. We'll go back to output 1, and the division and multiplication setting lets make that 4 beats for a full bar, just like that ramp LFO which is fading in the vibrato. Let's look at expanding on this basic synth voice. If we want in a more random rhythmic element to the patch, we can use the sample and hold gates. Remember it's the second output sending gates to the envelope generator to then generate an envelope to open up the VCA. I'll go to the output 2 and change that to a sample and hold gate.
Sample and hold takes a signal at its input, which is normally noise, which is a really fast fluctuating set of random values. And when the sample and hold receives a trigger, it will hold the current value until it receives the next trigger, telling it to hold the value at its input again. With a sample and hold CV, you would just get this random value at the output. But with a sample and hold gates, it's looking for a value to actually pass a threshold in order to send out a gate signal. So the random values fluctuate across a wide range and only certain voltage levels will produce a gate. This is still running at 16th notes, so we're only going to get random notes within a 16th note pattern. And once we find the rhythm that we like, we can loop this as it's always right in the previous bar of random data to internal memory. So let's wait for a rhythm that we like. I've hit option, and now this is repeating a one bar loop. So let's look at the sample and hold CV as well. We've still got that sample and hold gate triggering our envelope and we can play with that. But here let's modulate the filter with the sample and hold CV. The filter's modulation is from the third output and I'll turn up that modulation on the filter. So you can hear that LFO movement that we had previously. Let's turn that modulation down and leave the filter open. And then we're going to change the output type on the Octo controller to be a sample and hold CV. I'll set that at a rate of 16th note. And I'm going to turn up the VCA's level so it's a constant drone so we can clearly hear that filter modulation. output type of sample and hold CV and we can lock that random voltage to a one bar loop that is right into its internal memory as well. So you can hear those random values opening and closing that filter. Hitting option, we'll get the same set of values each time. And then close the VCA again and let that envelope modulate the VCA's level. So let's look at creating some drums. I've still got the previous part of the patch set up, minus a couple of parts of the modulation to free up some channels, so we can get some drum patterns going and use a synth voice out of the octo controller as well. I've zoomed in on the module as the drums are just going to be a simple trigger to that module, and then I'm going to mix the drum sounds into my sound card. I've got three outputs left, and I'm going to keep the tempo the same, and I'm going to go down to the next available output. This output type will be a pulse. Gate length is irrelevant in this instance, as any length of a pulse or gate will trigger the drum module. My clock division is going to be set to a quarter note, and you can see that's the same tempo as the beat LED at the top of the module. So here's a kick with a simple 4 to the floor foundation for the rhythm. Thinking about where the hi-hat would go in a typical house or techno beat, this will be the off beat in between the kicks. We still need a quarter note division as there's 4 beats in the bar, so on the next output I'll set this to be a pulse, and the clock division is going to be a quarter note. And here's patching that trigger into the hi-hat module. So you can hear that's on the kick, and that isn't playing where we want it to be, so let's use the phase setting. The phase sets at which point within its cycle, which you've set to be a quarter note, this beat will actually lie. So here's changing the phase. And you can hear that hi-hat's coming off the kick drum. all the way back onto a beat again. This is actually a beat later than it originally was, so let's pull this back. And right in the centre, 180 degrees out of phase, we've got a perfect offbeat pattern. 
you wanted to create some swing and change the groove, you could push this a bit further. Thinking about this sort of typical house and techno beat that we've got in mind, we'd have a clap that will play twice per bar. So we'll go to the next output, select this to be a pulse, and I want this to be half a bar so we get two hits per bar. But this is actually going to start on the wrong beat. Although it's hard to tell, this is on beats 1 and 3 and not beats 2 and 4, which is where we want it. And you can tell by watching the final output LEDs and watching the beat and bar LEDs on the top of the module. But we can use the phase offset to push this onto beats 2 and 4. For creating a different groove and placing the note differently, we could play around with the phase. So these are all completely quantized, but you can press the option button to turn off quantization and get completely smooth control of the phase for creating flams and custom swing settings. Let's pan the camera out and you can see the previous patch and we'll get the synth voice playing as well. So I've used the blue cables for the drums and my drum sounds are going into a mixer on some more blue cables on the right hand side of the screen. Here's the kick. Clap. And a hi-hat. And then just off screen I've got another mixer with all of these drums on one channel and I'm going to use another channel on that for the synth voice. And we can go back to that random gate triggering our envelope as part of the synth voice and let's press option to get the freely moving random gates again. Again, we lock this to internal memory and play back a loopable one bar pattern. So here's the same patch regarding those three drum sounds, but I've moved the module so you can see the rest of the patch we're going to set up. Let's expand on this, creating and modulating some drums. So first let's process some of these sounds. First let's take that snare output of the mixer and patch that out into a reverb and then come back into the mixer. So you can now hear we've got that reverb hit on the snare. Let's take the output from the reverb into an EQ module and then go back into the mixer. So you can hear some fairly intense EQ, so let's play around with that. So let's use the Octo Controller's LFO functions to modulate a resonant boost on the EQ. I'll take output 5 and turn that into a ramp wave LFO and take a slower division and I'm going to take the LFO into the frequency of that resonant boost on the EQ. You can hear the LFO's movement cycling, but let's change that to be a sample and hold signal so each hit gets a new random CV giving a different EQ curve per hit. Let's add another percussion layer. Using noise for percussion is a common practice, so let's use the Octo Controller's own noise function to create a new sound. I'm going to set the output type to noise and patch that into streams, which is going to generate an envelope when triggered and control an onboard VCA, which I'm going to take the Octo Controller to trigger that as well. But I'm actually out of mixer channels on shades, which I'm using as a free channel mixer. So I'm going to take shades output into frames and use shades as a submix into another mixer to give me more channels to play with.
So I'm going to take Streams' output into my mixer, now I've got these channels set up. I'm going to take another Octo Controller channel and set that to a pulse and use a 16th note pattern to trigger Streams' envelope to let that noise signal through. So I've got a basic 16th note pattern and we can mix that in with other drums. The Octo Controller's noise, used as simply as this, makes for a nice percussion element. Let's add some modulation and get this moving. So we're going to take the sound into the ripples filter and then take the low pass output back into streams. So this gives us basic filter control of the sound. I'll turn down the other drums and then take another output from the octo controller and let's take that for a sample and hold CV to the modulate the filters cut off. So on output 2 I've got the output type of sample and hold CV and the clock rate is 16th notes so it's running at the same speed that we're actually triggering the sound. Let's then add the sample and hold CV into the frequency modulation of that filter. Here's more resonance. And let's mix the other drums back in. Again we can go back and edit any of these parts. Let's go back to that 16th note rhythm and change the output type to be a sample and hold gate instead of a steady pulse. Turning option off, we're now getting random patterns. Once you hear that rhythm that you like, press option and lock that to a 1 bar repeatable loop. And then I'm going to change the envelope that's on streams, controlling the noise level. output left let's add a final sound and I'm going to use elements from mutable instruments which is just off screen but I'm simply going to trigger that sound and bring it into the mixer so there's not a lot to see. On output 1 I'm going to select the output type to be a pulse and the output division let's take that as a half a bar pattern and I'm going to take the elements of output into frames which is the mixer. So let's adjust the sound. So I'll go in and change the phase so that this isn't landing on the first and third beats. So there's an example of how to build up a more varied and modulated drum patch all triggered and controlled by the octo controller.